welcome to our special report. This week we are in Goa, the land which is known for its barney beaches, sea and sand. But the state is facing a peculiar situation. After tourism, the biggest economic driver is iron ore mining, which has been stalled after the Supreme Court reinforced the ban. But caught in a bind are livelihoods of lakhs and lakhs of people who associated themselves with iron ore mining through generations. Over the next 30 minutes, take a look at the environmental challenges faced by Goa in the backdrop of iron ore mining. What was once an environment-friendly beach resort now stands brutalized. Goa's natural resources plundered and looted by iron ore mining. Losses have been pegged at thousands of crores, but damage to the environment and loss of livelihood perhaps has not been estimated. All we know now is that Goa is not like what it was when it started gaining international acclaim as a friendly tourist destination. Rajya Sabha TV crew travelled through the Western Ghats to report damage caused by iron ore mining in Goa. The history of iron ore mining dates back to the pre-1961 period when Goa was a Portuguese colony known as Estado de India. At the invitation of its then colonial government, mineral prospectors from Japan surveyed the state and discovered huge reserves of iron ore, manganese and bauxite in the hilly areas of Western Ghats. The colonial government consequently granted mining concessions in specified areas to explore and extract the mineral. In all, 336 mining leases were granted. Only a few were excavated over the years and many remained idle for want of demand because the iron ore was low grade. Though the Indian Army liberated Goa in December 1961 from Portuguese rule, the status quo was maintained on these mining concessions and the mining companies were allowed to operate. In 1987, Parliament passed the Goa Daman and Diu Mining Concessions Act and abolished the concessions given to the miners by the Portuguese. The miners then challenged the act first in the Bombay High Court and later in the Supreme Court. In 1987, 336 leaseholders applied for renewal of leases. They were renewed for 10 years at a time. But when these came up for renewal in 2007, only 9 were renewed and notified by the Union Government under the Mineral Concessions Rule 1960. Out of 468 traders available at that time, at the time of cancellation, only 48 could re-register, which meant that the 420 people were doing all kind of things, which were really, really I will call them fly-by-night operators. Although only nine mining leases had been renewed, in reality there were around 90 mining leases that were operating. Goa exported nearly 54.45 million metric tons of ore. Gradually, with China boom and skyrocketing international prices of iron ore, brought in a number of Benami companies that began mining, speeding up environmental degradation of the state. Justice M.B. Shah Commission highlighted gross violation of environment rules and forest and revenue laws by almost every mine operating in the state. Report pegged the losses accruing from illegal mining at about 35,000 crore rupees. It said that decision to renew the expired mining licenses were not taken promptly and hence leaseholders misused the concept of deemed extension for a lease for an unlimited period on the basis of Rule 24 of the Mines Act 1952. On the basis of MB Shah Commission report, Supreme Court banned iron ore mining in Goa since October 2012 when the forest bench halted mining operations at all the 90 mines across the state. 
it appears that at the behest of vested mining interests, the government has wound up the Shah Commission without allowing them to complete their original remit, which was to examine the mining in all the states where iron ore mining had been going on. Since 2012, there is no sign of mining, but the damage was already done and the impact on environment has been devastating. We begin our journey towards a mining belt to show you the loss of the Goan paradise. As you approach the mining areas, a weird sense of unease engulfs you because of the strict vigil by mining companies. We tried taking some pictures around the Pale area in North Goa. the mining belt of Goa and when you're moving around these areas you come across images like these. What you see behind me are the mounds of extracted iron ore which are lying idle. This is basically the processing area and the mines are further down. We are purposely not disclosing the location because the matter is in the court, the matter is subjudice and that might also jeopardize the position of all the stakeholders. From North Goa we are now heading towards Ashwin Dogra iron ore mine. We are heading towards the Ashni Dongar Iron Ore Mine, which is in extreme South Goa in an area called Silaulim. This was once upon a time a lush green mountain with rich reserves of iron ore. But now what you see is a brutal reminder of what incessant mining can do. The entire hill has been raised to the ground. It's an unbelievable fact but a harsh reality what the bulldozers, drilling machines, trucks and loaders can do to a hill. Almost 50 meters away from here is the Silaulim Dam. And you can imagine when the rainwater flows from this iron ore hill into the dam, the amount of silt which it carries. And the biggest question then is what happens to the quality of water? Rampant mining has affected the Salaulim Dam on the Salaulim River in Sangim Taluka which supplies drinking water to half the state's population, besides providing water for irrigation and to the industries. Over 20 mines operated in the vicinity of the dam. Heavy silt has settled in the dam reservoir because of mining. The dam was commissioned in the 1970s with an expected lifespan of 100 years, but a study conducted by the Energy Resources Institute showed excess iron and manganese levels in the Silaulim reservoir water. I'm right now in Shirgaon, one of the many North Goan villages which have been completely devastated by the iron ore mining. The mining companies have mined below the water table and destroyed almost all the water resources. The landscape is completely scarred because the mining companies have dug deep into the rich red earth. Most of the mines in the state are concentrated in four talukas. Bichulim in North Goa and Satari, Sangem and Kepam Talukas in South Goa. Areas around this region once were lush green with betel nut, areca and cashew nut plantations. But there are no signs of these now. Close to 100 wells have dried up. Activists say that an estimated 100,000 people living in the villages in these four talukas have got affected. Besides loss of livelihood, they are also suffering from the adverse effects of air, noise and water pollution. In the village, there is a lot of trouble. All the wells are gone. And dust comes to the house. Noise pollution comes to the house. Mining is all for the trees. How is it? How is it? The trees are out of the house. All the trees are out of the house. All the trees are out of the house. 
100 trucks plying with iron ore from one mine may be quite acceptable, but when thousands of trucks from several mines start plying on the same road, it could lead to horrific traffic jams and accidents. This indeed became one of the bitterest complaints of the people of Goa. The Goa Foundation, which has carried on the legal fight against iron ore mining, says nearly three quarters of a million trees were felled in the last four years with 8.44% of Goa's territory under mining leases. Not only this, but groundwater as well as rivers like Mandovi and Zuari have been heavily contaminated. The commonly used practice of open cast mines produces up to three tons of waste for every one ton of iron ore produced. The large dumps of earth dislodged by mining even litter the landscape and the waste pollutes the rivers and lakes, many of which run red with ore. So the biggest question is how to improve the sustainability of mining in Goa. It's not only our fight, you know, um, about four or five years, the state government itself began to join in and say that these mines are creating a lot of problems for us and who has granted them these environment clearances. And then they wrote official letters to the Ministry of Environment saying that all these environment clearances that you have granted are all based on incorrect, false information. Let's take a short break at this point in time and return with plenty more on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching our special report on Goa Mining. Though there is a clampdown on mining, the extent of violations by the mining companies are still visible. Right now I am at Netravali Wildlife Sanctuary and for any wildlife sanctuary there is a buffer zone which extends to about 10 kilometers within which no activity is allowed. Now I am taking you to a location from where you will see how mining has been done within the buffer zone of this wildlife sanctuary. The Shah Commission had reported that mines had flourished in the heart of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in the state without clearance from the Standing Committee of the National Board of Wildlife as mandated by the Supreme Court. Areas ranging up to one kilometer beyond the boundaries of the national parks and sanctuaries in the state were declared as ecologically sensitive zone. Under the Environment Protection Act 1986, where mining activities were banned. But here we are. The environmental impact is exacerbated by the coincidence of India's iron ore belts with the Western Ghats, which is a fragile ecosystem ranked as one of the world's 12 ecological hotspots. Rich in biological diversity of plant and animal life, the highland area stretches 1,600 kilometers just inland across the west coast of India. Netravali Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, I moved the Supreme Court in 2003 and closed about 14 mining leases there because they were in the sanctuary, they were operating in a sanctuary. Now, um, 10 years later, I moved the High Court again, saying that, see, the leases have been closed in 2003. They have not been rehabilitated. We have to get this. Then they called the Forest Department. The Forest Department said, yes, we can do the rehabilitation and all that. They sent a note to all the mining companies, including Chogle and all that, and all the companies refused. They said, it's not our job. In fact, Shah Commission identified 2,796.24 hectares of encroached land and out of this 547.42 hectares were used for illegal extraction of iron ore. India is fifth, sixth uh, in that order of, in terms of the iron ores in world. So it is one of the major reserves which we possess and if we, with that reserve if we come to net importer situation it will be very bad for the economy. Now why do you say that the mining is illegal? Illegality begins with the excavation of the iron ore beyond the permissible limit. Politicians do not admit on camera but in private they accept the fact that the state government does not have the system to check whether the trucks carrying the iron ore are overloaded. The mining department and the pollution control board never carry out the inspection checks. In fact there is a huge disparity in the numbers and the figures given by the mining department and the mining companies. A look, a 
at another violation how mining companies didn't spare the thickly populated areas as well what you see behind me is a village called lamgao and the distance between this village and the mining site is barely a few meters away in fact you can see the mined hill which has been covered with blue tarpaulin sheets now the environmental laws say that the inhabited area should be more than 100 meters but here there is a major violation you can see the village right at the foothill of the mining site There are many places where violations have breached all limits. One of the biggest shocking points is the location where I'm standing right now. On my right is a cemetery which is a public space which is so close to the mining site which again is a violation of the Mines and Minerals Act and also raises questions as to how the environmental clearances were given to that particular mining company. And on my left if you see is a water tank which supplies drinking water to the neighboring areas and you can imagine the quality of water which is being supplied to the residents here. If environmentalists say that western ghats have been completely destroyed there is an equally strong and emphatic voice of the pro mining lobby which has its own logic of livelihood revenue to the state and the center and jobs for lakhs and lakhs of people. the Marmugao port area in South Goa and behind me you can see close to 300 barges which have been lying unused for the last one and a half years because the central and the state government withdrew the environmental clearances for the iron ore mining but let me tell you there are a number of mining dependents in fact four lakh of them in Goa whose livelihoods have got affected Marbu Gao Port is the biggest testimony of the mining business falling silent. Loading and unloading of iron ore which was the mainstay of the port no longer happens. The biggest victims are the barge owners. Atul Jada who is the president of the Goa Barge Owners Association is uncertain about the future. On last 30 years we have never defaulted in loans. Last 30 40 years at least I'm in the business from 1983 since the age of 23. we have never defaulted on the the first time that we had to default on the loans and there is no other alternate cargo kam se kam 1.5 baras ho gaya salary nahi hai service bhi nahi time for a short break don't go away we'll come back with plenty more on mining in goa back in a moment Iron ore mining has been Goa's biggest economic contributor after tourism in recent years. The state was India's largest exporter of iron ore with huge demand from China as the economic powerhouse ramped up steel production. Around 90,000 workers directly associated with mining have lost their jobs. अभी पिछले साल 2013 में जाने वाले से हमको निकाला उधर से वो टाइम से हम पूरा बेकार है कुछ रोजगार नहीं अभी एक देखेंगे दो साल में नहीं एक साल में नहीं चालू हुआ तो जान दे देंगे अपनी और क्या कर सकते हैं Goa has a natural advantage of being surrounded by sea water which leads up to the river and the river leading up to the mines in fact this is one of the unique features and also one of the environment friendly measures of transporting the mineral ore but all this transportation activity has come to a standstill also affecting the central economy because goa accounts for close to 50% of the iron ore exports thousands of trucks have been lying idle in goa since the mining ban took effect in fact subsidiary businesses associated with mining like that of the water workshops restaurant owners have nowhere to go डेढ़ साल से मशीनरी बंद है उसको रस्ट आया है अभी टायर भी उसका खराब हो जाएंगे एक ही जगह पे खड़े रखे हैं कहाँ से वो पैसा डालेंगे ये हालत में अभी सब लोग फंस गए हैं जो हमारा हंड्रेड परसेंट जो बिजनेस था वो टोटल डाउन हो गया डेली अभी ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बिजनेस बच गया हम लोग का A 
state government benefit scheme is offering a compensation package to the affected parties but it is proving to be a drain on government coffers the state government is having still tougher time because number 1 i lost 1500 crores which is 25% of my revenue of the state revenue 25% i just overnight vaporized and i am doing this additionally which is putting another 5% burden on me so it's not a it may not be adequate but i think it uh, it ensures survival goa has lost 35% of its revenue since the ban while the loss of foreign exchange earnings are also huge in fact banks have also piled up non performing assets goa is 3700 square kilometers of land 90 mines are operating every uh, lease is only uh, 100 hectares it means that hardly 9 uh, square kilometers of leases are being operated what are you talking about 9 square kilometers can create problem for 3700 square kilometers the supreme court of india has maintained the ban on iron ore mining but recently allowed the sale of more than 11 million tons of stockpiles miners say reauctioning is not a very viable option supreme court cannot push this forward giving one see three people or two people cannot uh, decide the fate of 15 lakh people goan people they have to see what is realistic in goa the court in the meanwhile has also set up a six member panel to determine an output limit for goa which will quantify the cap on production based on carrying capacity of roads etc the panel is expected to submit an interim report by february 15th 2014 i feel we have projected 20 million tons from the ore extraction and another 20 25 million tons from the old stockpile rejects which were rejects earlier but now can be exported so maybe about 40 million ton 30 million ton something like that can sustain us for another 100 years at least mining land can be rehabilitated once the iron ore is extracted in fact the good companies plant a large number of trees and restore the mines to lush forests once the ore is extracted there is also a perception that the reclaimed mines can bring back the rich biodiversity in a net positive manner but the biggest question is how many mining companies really do it the supreme court has also banned iron ore mining in karnataka the industry there faces social unrest idling of huge investment and manpower layoff though the supreme court partially lifted the ban in april 2013 the industry is still tottering and is struggling to find itself on the feet the issue should be addressed at the moment is about regulated mining i am of the opinion that regulated mining should start immediately but there have to be regulations in place As per the strategic plan document prepared by the Ministry of Mines, mining sector has the potential to contribute up to 11.25 lakh crore rupees to the GDP and can create up to 1.5 crore jobs by 2025. So the big question is how can the regulatory mechanisms balance out environmental concerns? While mining is one of the important growth engines of the country, preserving the environment is an equally significant prerogative. To maintain a fine balance between the two perhaps a proper system of checks and balances need to be implemented not on paper but practically workable solutions while i move out from goa to see you on another journey goodbye and thanks for watching